Hello my soccer universe. Well, we're in the first heat wave of the month. And yeah, even in the morning it is kind of stuffy. So yeah, <laughs> that shirt will not stay on long on me. Um, and unfortunately, uh, fitting to the heat wave, we got a rather, you know, slow, lean day of football slash soccer yesterday. Uh, it was not great watching. I even didn't see the first game. And when I saw at halftime some tweets of how uh, boring this is, I was thinking, good thing that I'm at my parents' pool and cooling off and not watching that one and sweating to death in many ways. So, good choice there. But we anyway gonna talk about these games because uh, it's still, they might not have been all that great, all three of them, but there are some interesting implications that come uh, with them and uh, maybe they are just a prelude of what's to come today. Where, yeah, I'm not sure how much I will be able to watch because we are traveling for a little bit, so yeah. And uh, I'm afraid that in the evening Spain will bore me, but we'll get to that. Uh, well, before we get into the boring games, let's talk a little bit uh, some news. I think the best news is that Christian Eriksen is out of the hospital. He got his little defibrillator on the heart uh, and will be now supporting Denmark from the stands. So I think that's probably the best news we have received so far in the tournament. And then one uh, piece of news that I'm honestly uh, leaves me uneasy and that is the news that um, Due to the new Delta uh, mutation of the coronavirus going around in England, UEFA is kind of sneakily trying to push the, the final four is moved to Budapest because they, of course, you have full spectators. Officially, they always say, yeah, if they cannot open up a little bit more and if this variant is getting really dangerous, then we might move uh, from London to Budapest. Pandering to another autocratic uh, regime uh, just for money. I cannot tell you how much I dislike this. I cannot tell you how much I dislike this. Uh, if this really were to happen, uh, it would devalue these euros for me big time. But hey. Sweden, Slovakia. I actually watched a three minute highlight reel and from that it seemed like the most exciting game ever. <laughs> uh, because especially the second half, the Isaac kind of tried to ratchet up a little bit and get some uh, chances for Sweden and he was then actually uh, also instrumental in the pass to Kweissen that uh, where he was taken down by Dubravka. And Forsberg with a really precise penalty converts and hence the win to Sweden. That's pretty much all that I could see. A little bit disappointed by the jersey matchup. Uh, but then, yeah, okay. The one thing that is probably most disappointing there is that Weislovakia didn't really open up. I think they didn't even have a shot on goal. Was it really that Sweden uh, stifled them so much? Because, I mean, uh, get a draw here and you're looking pretty. Uh, so that loss is a little bit of head scratch, especially with the fact that uh, you're going to play against Spain next. So, but you know, maybe you can pour Spain into a draw as well. Just thought this was uh, interesting. Moving on to the Czechs versus uh, Croatia. That game I saw uh, again. I didn't find it super boring, but it was not exciting. And yeah, there, there, there were barely any chances, but I could at least see that the teams, there is some talent on the field. Now, as far as faint praises goes, I think this is pretty much up there. Um, and so, yeah, it was probably one of those penalty decisions where, uh, probably the first one even, where you would say, uh, I don't understand this because so 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 far the refereeing has been uh, much about no nonsense. Uh, it wasn't intended or, or not. Lovren jumps up high, the elbow is high, and he basically it goes right into the nose of Schick. What can I say? Uh, I think I can understand from what I've seen uh, over the past two years that this might be a penalty. It surely helped that Schick's nose was completely uh, bloodied and yeah 
um, potentially broken. Uh, he couldn't even take his penalty immediately, and then it was uh, he uh, had to be taken care of. But then he converts his penalty. 1-0 Czech Republic, and I thought, yeah, that might be interesting because now Croatia finally really needs to show us something. It didn't take too long because right after they have uh, a Perisic, after a ball from Kramaric, uh, he gets the uh, the ball and then makes a kind of an individual effort, cuts in and then uh, nicely curls in, into the net. 1-1. One, one. Game also not helped by the Jersey matchup. Uh, and yeah, then it fizzled out because both kind of saw, yeah, uh, draw is good. I mean, the Czechs know that uh, draw here will probably see, see them through and they were celebrating as much. And then uh, the other game of, of uh, Croatia, they also fancied themselves to beating Scotland. So yeah, I guess a draw is fair and that's probably down to this uh, weird tournament format where the best third place team go through. So 1-1 one, one it ends. At least we got goals. At least we got goals, which is something we did not get for England, Scotland. But I was faintly entertained. Uh, but I was really, really uh, disappointed by England. For me, England barely showed up. So, I mean, a little bit in the first half, you could see that England maybe has the better team. But uh, as soon as Scotland got their act together. They seem to be well in there. They went through the fight, and this is exactly what I expected from Scotland. I was, but uh, I did not expect from England to just be not there. Yes, they had the header by Stones uh, that went on to, to the post. They had a half chance by Harry Kane, who seems like completely off. Uh, but I think already in the first uh, few minutes. There could have been a goal for Scotland, uh, was clearly of O'Donnell. That was the first great save that uh, Pickford had to make. I think Marshall barely had to make a save. Second half, um, again, England at the beginning a little bit, but then the Scotland came, came in, had, I think, a couple of goal-scoring opportunities where if you have a true striker up front, uh, you score here. And you take the win, and I think Scotland has only, only won at the Euros on the 18th of June, which I find also rather re remarkable. Um, I was actually really hoping that Scotland will get the win, uh, because they were fighting for, for, for it, and England was thoroughly dis dis disappointing. And then a substitution, taking Foden off and bringing Grealish on. Uh, please, a little bit more offensive power, honestly. Kane should have come, come, come off much, 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 much sooner than he actually uh, actually did. There was then very late on, I think it was a, a, a step on, on Sterling, uh, but Lahos waved it off immediately that he's not going to look at it. I thought if this would have gone to war, England could have had a penalty there. Um, but yeah, it ends nil-nil and Scotland definitely deserved that draw. Um, might be the only point that they're getting at this Euros, but on the, on the other side, if now beat a Croatia side that was everything but the, uh, convincing, you have actually a good shot of advancing, which would be first for Scotland. So, um, looking at the standings now, first Group D before we go to um, uh, Group E. We have the Czechs ahead of England, and that's the other thing. I mean, everyone thought in England should finish second because you avoid the Group F opponent. You would play, if you finish second there, you would play in the next round against the winner of Group F, as we will see. So uh, it makes next to no sense, and you have to travel further. I think a, a trip to Rome is probably even more... Uh, pleasant uh, than any, anything else. So England controlled their destiny whether they want to finish second or first but they would have even controlled that if you uh, if you win because then with the checks you can yeah if you really want, wanted to finish second you could lose that game just easily. Yeah, now and we with a draw. You have to win to win this uh, group. That's Clear. Uh, a draw is enough for the for for the Czechs, and similar story between Croatia and Scots, uh, Scotland, who both will need a win. I think a draw between those, those two will not be enough. Um, as for Group E, Sweden now with four points, rather poised. I mean, it's not that they are qualified final already, but they look very much poised to uh, qu to qualify. And in my sim 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 simulations, there is almost no simulation where they fell through. So uh, four points is really that's uh, the magic number. Um, again, third place teams 
yeah, Spain probably will get the win and then we have to see how this develops. So again, projections, projections, projections. Um, let's focus on the groups. There's nothing that really changed in Group D. Uh, England, Czech Republic, Croatia, Scotland. I think uh, Cro uh, Croatia only with a win and a big loss of the Czech Republic against England. So over goal difference can actually leapfrog. So the Czechs look rather safe in the second spot and can eye a little bit the first uh, uh, spot. England uh, rather disappointing. Uh, Scotland, yeah. Third place is the best and you need to hope to go through as one of the best third place teams, which, yeah. You have to first beat Croatia. Uh, as I said, Sweden, uh, rather, I mean, still said, I said on second place uh, now, but looking rather safeish there. And as for the best third place teams, Austria, Slovakia, Germany, and Finland at the moment. So there's been a little bit shifting around. If we look now at the uh, projected bracket, three bracket whatever uh you know italy is uh against ukraine we have france against finland and the czechs against uh sweden and that's what, what, what i was saying i mean england would slot in there against sweden already uh nest 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 a play against france doesn't seem good i think stay winning the group and having a tough game at wembley i think uh is better you have spain uh austria england portugal netherlands slovakia at the moment that's ring some memories from 2010 and wales against russia and then it moves on there have been not many changes except that sweden is now in a quarterfinal over the Czechs. uh there uh as for over favorites at the moment belgium uh overtook france uh slightly i think it is down to uh, where england might slot up and so on so uh the paths the paths are getting a little a little a little bit clearer uh also if england would win win the group this would be hard to draw for portugal uh so they drop again and now it seems a little bit more certain that england will win the group uh many changes sweden as i said moving now up and then uh, many changes and look who's back in number 13, Austria, which uh, I just cannot believe that they spit it out. We have a pretty big day today. I mean, Hungary against France uh, for atmosphere. I think France will win this one, but maybe not by the 3-0 scoreline, which might uh, be interesting for uh, the final group game. And then Portugal, Germany, which really is for me the, the most in interesting game of match day two. Uh, it has a little bit draw written all over it because it will not eliminate anyone, but I think Germany would definitely need him, especially with the 3 0 win by Portugal. So I think Germany needs to show us some, 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 something. I think what will not bode well is the heat at the moment. And then uh, Spain, Poland. Yeah. I don't expect much, although I would hope that Spain will score this time around. So, yeah, that was it for me. As I said, lean day of football yesterday. Hope it will get better. Please let, let me know what you thought, thought about the games yesterday. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.